Uh, someone asked me to do a hypervoxels tutorial. I was planning on doing one anyway, so that works out pretty good. Let's get started. You can use hypervoxels with just about anything, but um, usually you want to use it with a uh, particle emitter. So let's go to uh, items tab, um, dynamics, particle. Well, let's make a hypervoxel em emitter. And uh, <clears throat> here's a, a particle emitter. Let's get some more frames here so we can see it animating. Here's our particles coming into existence. They're just kind of sitting there, so let's give them something to do. Let's go to motion tab. Let's give it an explosion. I'll give it an explosion of two. All right. So now we have. Uh, we're going to create like a little fireball explosion kind of thing, a car exploding or something. So now we have a, an explosion. Let's give it some fireball. Ooh, that's a bit much. All right. The particles are coming out. They're doing all their crazy stuff. And um, let's attach hypervoxels to this. Uh, let's go Control F6. Bring up our effects tab. Volumetrics. Add volumetric hypervoxels. Double click on that to bring up the hypervoxels panel. And we'll have to move this over so you can see what's going on here. So now we have our, our particle emitter. And um, it's not going to show anything yet because we haven't attached the hypervoxels. If you had different objects, they would all show up in here. You could attach it to anything you want. Actually, you could attach it to an object and maybe have it come out of the vertices of the object. Uh, we're going to attach it to the, this emitter. Double click on it. Now it's attached. And uh, you won't see anything yet. Um, until you click on show particles and now you'll see something. Now you have um, three object types for the hypervoxels. You got surface which would be something you would want to use if you're going to create like liquid or something. If you look at the prologue in uh, the movie Dragon Wars on my website the, when the dragon gets his neck chopped off um, the blood was created using this hypervoxels to make a liquid blood. Uh, volume, this would be great if you want to have a uh, uh, cloud or something you want to fly through it because these are actual as you can see these are actual 3d objects that uh, occupy 3d space and uh, you can zoom the camera right through these and it'll behave just like a real cloud but your render times will become absolutely astronomical so if you can get away with it go to sprite mode and as you can see it just creates like a little a billboard just like in a, a video game environment um, this is like a little image map that's just pasted on here. It's a little flat polygon that's actually facing the camera at all times. So you can spin the camera around and it looks like it's 3D, but it's fake. It's actually 2D and it's rotating to look at you. Alright, so now we have some, some hypervoxels and as you can see, um, it looks like a little cloud coming out. So let's go to the shading tab and give it more of a kind of a dark red color. Alright, so now it's looking kind of blood red. And um, <clears throat> then we'll go to the Hyper Texture tab. And this is the texture that's going to be put onto each one of these individual voxels. Uh, you can't really see it here, but um, there is a uh, this crumple texture is being applied to each one of these billboards. So if we were to go to Render and render a frame of this, you'll see that that crumple texture is being applied on there. And it looks uh, doesn't look too too bad. I mean, it's not very realistic, but we're just going for something quick. <clears throat> now, if you cranked up the temp uh, texture amplitude, then the light and dark areas of this texture would become much more uh, pronounced. And if you wanted each one of these, um, another thing to pay attention to is the texture effect. And uh, if you were to add this, that means each one of these voxels, in addition to having this uh, texture on there, will in fact uh, animate that texture in a certain way. So if you were to select billowing, uh, since we want this to look, look like an explosion, it would add extra realism because it would look like an actual turbulent uh, piece of gas here moving. Uh, one thing is uh, I found that you should set this texture effect very, very low. And let's crank this down to like 65. Uh, because other... Okay, I don't know if I lost you there. Uh, otherwise, it's going to when it actually animates. Uh, if that uh, if that um, texture uh, effect is set to a very high amount, then when it animates, it's going to look extremely fake. Um, well, there you can see a, a bit more the crumple texture coming into play. Actually, it looks a bit too much. You might want to go for like uh, turbulence instead. It might give it a more realistic look. Um, but I'll let you go ahead and, uh, of course, if you pump up the contrast, you'll see the light and dark areas of the texture even more pronounced. 
Um, but I'll leave that to you to play with for the time being. Everything else here is very similar to the standard uh, mapping options you have for your surfaces. Um, let me show you something real quick here because this will make your, your objects look much more um, realistic. Um, when I first started using hypervoxels, my voxels looked very fake because they would just pop into existence and then they would pop out. So if you notice here, these voxels at the very edge, as they're about to die off, they just pop away. They pop on, they pop out. And um, the reason why is that they're attached to the particles and when the particle exists and dies, it, it the voxel exists and dies at the same time and there's no transition. So let's go into the particle size and uh, let's give it some size variation actually. That'll make the different particles look, they will, each particle will have a different size voxel on it. It looks much more realistic if you do that sometimes. Let's click on the texture tab and uh, go to gradient and instead of using these options let's go to particle age. So this is set to from zero, age of zero to thirty. These um, uh, these particles live to an age of 60. Let's give it an age of 60. And then um, let's go here. So when they when the particles first come into being, we will give them a value of zero. So they will have no size. And then they will ramp up as the particle uh, ages. That will give it, and let's see, let's do at the end as well. We'll have it, when they, when they go to die, let's have it so that, all right, so the, the particles, oops. Cranked on that by accident. All right. So the particles begin at a size zero, uh, come into full size around frame 30, and then stay there for a while. And then by the time they die, they they go back to zero. Use that. And as you can see, they're actually. It's still hard to see it in the open gel. They do kind of. But you can actually see here. If we zoom in on one of these guys, that he is actually. Did you see that effect there? It's hard to see in the OpenGL, but but he's actually zooming out. He's actually scaling down as he goes. Let's go in here, copy this, because I'm going to use it again somewhere else. Let's go to the shading tab, and under the opacity. So of course the opacity is you know how how visible this object is. Let's let's go to the opacity channel and paste that and replace that. Now your your particles are going to look much more realistic. They won't pop on and off of the screen. Um, let's go to the color tab and let's give these guys, uh, let's go back to particle age and let's see, we'll start out with a dark color and then they will come and become kind of uh, really, really bright, like a yellow and then as they age further they'll become kind of red and then at the very end they'll become dark again. Okay. So now you'll see the psychedelic effects. And as you can see how quickly we were able to do that and how quickly we were able to get something that looks completely funky in, in just a, a very short amount of time. Um, let me go back in there and change... Did I do that already? Yeah, size variation. I'm going to give it that. Um, just a, a few little extra things here is um, stretch direction if you want these things to be stretched by the amount like when they're coming out sometimes uh, items will elongate as they are, are moving as the particles are moving you would use the velocity and the stretch amount to show that and that can sometimes if used judiciously can uh, increase the believability of your particle system let's do another render here and see what it's looking like now. Well, it looks very unrealistic, but I'm just doing this to show you. But if you were to go in, you can do all sorts of bizarre, funky effects. I mean, this is sort of like a, uh, I mean, this is sort of like a uh, coral reef here. You can even use it to create like plants and things like that. If you set the particles so they don't move and they don't die off, um, and just set it like that, you could, for example, make these green and and very. Uh, you could use the volume and make it make bushes and all sorts of things like that using it. Um, I hope that tutorial helps out. This is just the beginning introduction to hypervoxels, um, just to show you how things run.